President Obama is sending more American troops to Iraq ahead of a major offensive to recapture a key city from ISIS terrorists. Quite the evolution for a president and an administration that touted the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Iraq as a major success. Chief Washington correspondent James Rosen reports tonight from the White House. As the Pentagon announced the deployment of another 615 troops to Iraq, President Obama visited the rank and file at Fort Lee in central Virginia. You're helping us to destroy ISIL, and we will destroy them. You're keeping us safe. The low key announcement of additional troop deployments marked the 11th by the Obama administration in the last 27 months, each time ranging from 200 to 1,500, such that the total number of U.S. troops and advisors in Iraq will exceed 5,000 by the time the president leaves office. While some Americans have embedded with Iraqi security forces at brigade and battalion levels, the administration has maintained that no U.S. forces are participating in combat operations, only advising and assisting the Iraqis as they reclaim territory held by ISIS and brace for the coming battle for Mosul, Iraq's second largest city and the last urban stronghold there controlled by the terrorist group. But I need to uh, make clear once again, American forces combating ISIL in Iraq are in harm's way. In an interview with the Fox News documentary unit, retired General David Petraeus, an architect of the troop surge that stabilized Iraq in the final years of the Bush-Cheney era, faulted President Obama for withdrawing the majority of U.S. troops from Iraq and thereby allowing ISIS to gather strength and declare a caliphate. There was an opportunity, I do think, if we pursued it aggressively, to keep forces there, perhaps to do it without a status forces agree. I mean, the irony is that we have what is now approaching 6,000 troops in Iraq on the ground uh, without a status of forces agreement. So perhaps we could have taken that risk uh, and done that. The incrementalism of the current approach in Iraq carries echoes of the 1960s when President Lyndon B. Johnson conducted the protracted war in Vietnam gradually increasing U.S. troop deployments to advise and assist an indigenous allied force of questionable effectiveness. The policy of escalation ended in anguish for LBJ, as Brian Vandemark, a professor at the U.S. Naval Academy, recounted in Into the Quagmire, Lyndon Johnson and the escalation of the Vietnam War. His views are his own and not those of the Navy. The uh, momentum of events and the pressure of circumstances can oftentimes carry decision makers and even those in the field uh, beyond the point where uh, they had intended to go. And I suspect that Obama and his advisors are just as susceptible to that dynamic and those pressures as Johnson was half a century ago. White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest noted to reporters that there were 144,000 U.S. troops in Iraq when President Obama took office. He said the mission for the 5,000 remaining there now is also markedly different, even though Earnest acknowledged that some special forces will carry out, quote, discrete missions in which they, quote, engage the enemy directly. Brett. James Rosen, live in the North Lawn. James, thank you.